Hi everybody and welcome to the Sound Beginning series. I'm Eric Combs and the reason that I have put together these materials is um, I've been teaching for 13 years and I remember as a first year teacher I didn't have any experience with middle school prior to my first job. Um, in student teaching I had had three middle schoolers and they kind of had some odd personalities. They were a little squirrely and I figured it was just those three kids and then uh, I got my first job teaching middle schoolers and had about 140 of them and realized that all 140 of them had the exact same personality. They were just a bunch of squirrels. Um, I was pretty clueless about what I was doing. I remember right at first I had a sixth grade general music class and I didn't know what level of material to be giving them and I wrote out an entire curriculum for nine weeks starting with some basic music theory I thought to by the end of the nine weeks we were going to be writing some four powder chorales. And, uh, after the very first day of teaching, I took all of those lesson plans and watered them up and threw them away and we started learning how to clap quarter notes the next day. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, I wish I could have seen somebody else do this, talk to them about the pacing that I should have done with these middle schoolers. And now 13 years later, once I'm starting to kind of get the hang of it, I thought, you know, there's probably a whole lot of other people in that exact same boat. So the best thing for me has been going around and seeing some different programs and watching other people reading books. So this series is going to be kind of your chance to do that with my program. I want it to be informal, kind of like you are visiting my school and just sitting across from my desk talking to me about what I do and get a chance to see my camp so that you can have the opportunity to see how some other schools do it before you do it yourself. Um, <clears throat> included in this series is some videos on tips on how to teach camp, teach the first five lessons on, on several different instruments. I also have videos for kids so that they can go home and then the idea being their parents can watch this also and get some tips on how to uh, help their kids at home and they can even learn how to play the first few notes or so and then they'll know what the kids have learned so that they can talk them through it a little bit. I've also got raw footage of the entire camp for those of you that are really bored and want to watch the whole thing. Um, some people have told me that they've taken it and sped it up and watched it like one and a half times. So everybody will sound high pitched, but you can get through it quicker. All right, prior to this, um, I did some recruitment at the end of the last school year. By the way, my camp starts the week after school gets out. So the last couple of months of school, I'm doing my recruitment. I'll go and I'll play a concert with my honor bands, my seventh and eighth grade bands for the kindergartners, first graders, second graders, third graders. Now those are large classes of about 150. So what we do is just a real short 15, 20 minute concert, just one right after the other. Once for the kindergartners, then for the first graders, then for the second graders, then for the third graders. Now for the fourth and fifth graders, we'll do a longer concert and we'll, we'll talk um, about band. And for the fifth graders, we'll tell them that we're about to come around and let every one of those 150 kids play all of the instruments. So about a week after that, I will take kids in groups of five and I'll have a set of mouthpieces for each one of the kids to play. I'll teach them how to play those mouthpieces and then I'll pass around the instruments and let them play and I'll tell them what instrument I think would be best for them. Now the beauty of this is as they are playing each one of these instruments, they find out they can't play some of them, they just can't make any noise on it and they find out they're real natural for some other ones and usually by the end of the 45 minutes the kids actually want the instrument that they're able to play most easily. So it works out really well in my favor because then I kind of brainwash the kids into wanting the instrument that's best for them. If you're interested in seeing how this works, I've also got a video about my recruitment process and trying out the different instruments and that's on this uh, Sound Beginnings website. Just look for the recruitment video. Okay, um, prior to the camp, I've done a few things. Number one, I've hired a helper. My helper uh, this year is Chelsea Cotterell. She is a percussionist and she has taught um, music. She's taught band. And uh, right now she lives in town. Um, she's got a couple of small kids of her own and she's a stay at home mom right now. But she's fantastic for this because I'm not a percussionist. Um, I know how to teach it, but it's going to be better to have her in there to, to help the kids with some of the more specifics. So um, I charge the kids $10 each. The school's all right with this, we use the band room, and the deal is they pay the school, and then I turn in timesheets and stuff, and then the school pays me. 
I'm going to get about 40 kids a year, which means I'm going to get $400 off of this. And then I just split it with my helper. I'll take, I'll keep 200. I'm going to give her 200. Now I've, I've told her that her job is to you know, walk around while I'm teaching and answer any questions the kids have. You know, just putting their ligatures on wrong, help them with the reed placement, um, hand position, got wrong fingerings on things, um, grip on the percussion instruments. <coughs> So as I'm talking and demonstrating things, she's helping the kids, and that saves so many headaches and helps you go a lot quicker. So it's totally worth the, the $200 help. Um, also, you're probably going to have a kid that's going to walk in late um, or totally miss the first camp, which I try to tell the parents not to, to send a kid in on day two if they haven't been to day one. Um, I'll give them private lessons and try to get them caught up before I put them into camp. So. It's also good to have this helper around if somebody does pop in like that, or if you just have a couple of kids who come to the second lesson and didn't quite grasp or didn't practice the first lesson and they need extra help on it, you can just send them with the helper into another room while you move ahead with the other group. She'll get the that group caught up. So prior to the camp, I have um, <coughs> oiled all of the school instruments and all of the um, instruments that the kids have rented because I'm giving them uh, the kids that have rented instruments, I'm giving those instruments to them the first day of camp. I've greased them, I've recorded the serial numbers in a spreadsheet that I have, um, and also I have a, a few extra instruments from, uh, like I might have a few extra flutes, a few extra clarinets, because invariably somebody's going to show up for camp and they're not going to have an instrument, so you have to have one ready to go. Got my reeds ready, um, just have everything ready to pass out right whenever they come in the door. I also have a app on my tablet that's called Teacher Kid, and I love that app because what it is, it's, a, it's an app that helps you to have different classes, like you'll have a flute class, a clarinet class, a saxophone class, and then you can take a picture of the kid as they walk in, and it'll, um, it'll put a little picture with their name, and you can even make a little seating chart, and what's good about that is as they walk in, you're taking their picture, that night you can enter them into the app and then you can study what they look like and study their names so that when they come to lesson two, hopefully you know all their names by then. If you want to take it a step further, get one of the fifth grade um, yearbooks, like you're starting sixth graders, and um, then what you're going to do is just take, a, take their picture from the yearbook, put it into the teacher kid app before camp starts if you've had registration for it, and then when they come in on day one you're going to know their names already, which is pretty cool for the kids, pretty cool for you, makes your life a lot easier. But uh, that being said, when they come into camp, they're going to write down their name on a sticky label. They're going to put it on their book. Um, if they're borrowing a book from the school, I would put the school name on there also. That helps if they leave it and you know who to give it back to. They're going to put their name on their shirt also for the first day so that you make sure that you get their name right. And you're doing all this as they enter. Uh, taking their money, writing it down in the class record book, and uh, <clears throat> then it's time to get started. I save all of my maintenance tips till the end of the camp. Like I said before, I get the instruments ready before camp and I get them all cleaned and oiled and it's not going to hurt anything to wait to swap these out for two weeks as long as then you show them how to do it and then have them do it every day after that. Um, also the oiling is not going to hurt to wait two weeks to show them how to, how to oil it as long as then you tell them to do it a couple times a week after that. So I like to get to the playing first so that they'll have some playing that they can do at home and then we save the maintenance for last. And um, another one of my principles that is never put a piece of music down in front of a kid um, that has material in it that they don't already know how to do. And by that I mean um, if they come in to day one of the camp and you show them how to put the instrument together and say it's you're showing them how to put together a baritone and all you gotta do is you gotta put the mouthpiece in there and then you're ready to start playing something. Don't put the book down in front of them and say, okay, here's how we finger this. These are quarter notes. This is how we're gonna tongue them. This is how it's gonna go. You're gonna confuse the kid. They're trying to think of note names. They're trying to think of what something looks like on a staff, which a lot of them can't remember that from elementary school. Um, and they're trying to think about tonguing. They're trying to think about note production and it's just gonna confuse them. So one thing at a time. The very first thing that my method does is it teaches them how to play the instrument. And um, there is no notation with this. 
And so they're learning the first five notes, they're learning how to tongue those notes. For the brass players, they're learning how to go back and forth between the lower note and then the harmonic. Uh, in fact, I don't put anybody on trumpet or baritone or trombone who can't already play those two notes whenever I try them out. Uh, my first year teaching, I had a, a girl who could play a B flat on a trombone, low B flat, and for the entire year she could not hit F. And looking back, that was probably my fault because I shouldn't have put her on that instrument. If she couldn't play B flat and F to begin with, then um, I was setting her up for failure. So now, if a kid can't play both of those notes, I don't put them on the instrument. Um, that way, whenever the very first lesson starts, we can talk about going back and forth between the two notes, which they already know how to do, and then I can assign that to them. They go home and they practice going back and forth. Then they'll practice tonguing, and then I'll teach them by rote what those notes are. I'll say, okay, this one's the B flat, then we have the C and the D, and um, <clears throat> they will, first of all, learn that. Once they can do that, and they can think, okay, this is how you play a B flat, how to do it and they can do it then you put the written notation in front of them it'll make life so much easier and what they're doing is they're seeing what what they already know how to do looks like okay that being said there's uh, flashcards that come with this kit now you don't want to start a kid with a staff with a note on it and then say okay look at this and figure out what the fingering is because that's a two-step process number one they have to figure out what the letter name is and then number two, they have to figure out what the fingering is for that letter name. So it's a multi-step process. That's why there's two sets of, of flashcards. Set number one needs to be mastered first. It just has the letter name. It'll just say B flat. And the kid has to know how to play a B flat. Once they master that, then add it in the second step. Put it on the staff. That's flashcard set number two. So they already know how to play a B flat. Now they're seeing what it looks like. So they see it and they have to think, okay, that's a B flat. But then they already know how to play that B flat. It takes away a step there in the middle. So flashcard set one first, then flashcard set two. I have a little board in my classroom. Um, I'll usually use the whiteboard for this, but for this demo, I'll just show you what I would write on that whiteboard. I'm writing a staff, and we'll just pretend like we're playing trumpet here. I'm going to write out the first five notes in whole notes, and it's going to look like this. And there's a couple of drills that we do with this method. Uh, note drill number one is a real simple one. All I do is I say B flat, and the kid will um, say we're playing uh, a baritone or a trombone. I'll say B flat. All they have to do is play it back to me, and I got to look and make sure they have the right fingering, that they have the right slide position, and then I'll say F, D, and I'll have them. Play those notes. That's note drill number one. Once they get really familiar with that, we give them flashcard set two. They learn those at home, and the parents can help them out with that. And then we're ready for the speed drill. And for the speed drill, um, first of all, to get them warmed up, I'll just point to a note, and I'll see who the first person is that can say the letter name. So somebody will say C, and then I'll put, point to another random note, and the class will say those notes. Then we're going to have a competition with it. Um, and I tell them that the goal is to get this in under 10 seconds by the end of the summer. So when school starts, they need to be able to do it in under 10 seconds. And if they want to be really, really good at it, they can do it in under 5 seconds. And I show this to the parents. There's a flashcard in there for the parents to use, and the parents can drill them on this as well. And they can time them. I use the um, stopwatch app on my, on my phone, the alarm app. Okay, so you're just going to point at random, at random notes. Wait till they play it. Go to another random note, wait till they play it. And when they play the last note, you're going to look and see how much time it was. You can record the, the leaders up on the board. Uh, if you have extra time, you can run through this a second time with everybody. And the kids really enjoy it and they like making a competition out of it and seeing if they can beat their time on it. If they play a wrong note, go ahead and let them finish. But just know that if they played a wrong note and they got it under 10 seconds, that time doesn't count. They have played all perfectly. And this is where it helps to really be able to hear this in your head. So as you're pointing at this, you're going to know what it's going to sound like in your head ahead of time. That way you can match what's in your head to what they're playing and see if they played the right note or not. And then you don't have to look at their fingers. So in my head, I'm, I'm humming these notes and I'm listening to see if what they played was correct or not. So those are the note drills. There's some slideshows that go along with this method. Um, I use them because it saves time. If you're not great with slideshows, 
then I would suggest just writing the stuff on the board. And, uh, if, it's, if it's going to waste time for you, then don't do that. Only do it if it's going to save you time. Um, and also, I've been doing this for a really long time, so I'm able to get through it pretty quickly. You might need a little more time with each one of your lessons uh, to begin with. It's better to have more time than to have not enough time. So you might plan for that ahead of time, um, the first couple of years that you do this. So I can cram all that information in pretty quickly and go straight from one group to the next. Uh, but it's okay to relax it, make it a little bit longer, because then you can just review the things that you've done or you can do um, more of the note drills, things like that. So a few tips there. Um, so the next step would be to watch some of the teaching videos for each one of the instruments and get an idea of that. And if you want to, then you can go ahead and watch the full footage. Thank you. Good luck with your camp this year.